Text. Introduction to Just Clean Your Hands. A woman stands in front of a blue background. Everyone who works in a long-term care home knows that an important part of caring is making sure people are safe. And part of staying safe means making sure that infections don't spread from person to person inside the home. It takes all our skill, knowledge, and professionalism to make a difference to the health of our residents every day. No matter how busy we are, there's one thing we can all do. Just clean your hands. We can make an important difference in our residents' health and in our personal safety by cleaning our hands the right way at the right time. As we care for residents, move from room to room, as we work and as we help out in everyday activities, our hands transmit bacteria and viruses, often referred to as organisms or germs, that can make our residents sick. We all believe that we keep our hands clean, but scientific evidence shows that too often we all miss cleaning our hands at the key moment. Staff who consistently use proper hand hygiene can help prevent the spread of infection. If we can improve hand hygiene by 20%, we can reduce healthcare associated infections by as much as 40%. A recent study in Toronto at Sunnybrook Health Sciences Centre Long-Term Care has demonstrated the higher the hand hygiene compliance rate, the lower the norovirus attack rate. That can mean fewer people with diarrhea or vomiting. All it takes is cleaning your hands for 15 seconds with an alcohol-based hand rub. A nurse rubs her hands. Alcohol-based hand rub is the preferred way to clean hands. It's even better than washing hands unless your hands are visibly dirty. And it's easier on your skin and takes less time than soap and water washing. Hands are washed at a sink. Whenever your hands are visibly soiled, wash with soap and water. Technique matters. How you wash your hands makes a big difference. Remove rings and bracelets or leave jewelry at home when you come to work. Make sure that your sleeves are rolled up. To clean hands properly, rub all parts of the hands with the alcohol-based hand rub or soap and running water. Pay special attention to fingertips, between fingers, backs of hands and base of the thumbs. Keep your nails short and clean. Don't wear artificial nails. And remove chipped nail polish. Artificial nail wraps or extensions harbor organisms that are not removed by cleaning hands. When your hands are visibly dirty, wash with soap and water. Make sure you lather hands for at least 15 seconds. Always pat your hands thoroughly dry. You'll be cleaning your hands often with either alcohol-based hand rub or hand washing, so apply lotion frequently. Look after your hands and skin all the time, even when you're not at work. Protecting your hands and your health is a commitment to be kept 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The power to make a difference is in your hands. We are working towards improving hand hygiene in our home. That involves everyone, and everyone has a role in practicing hand hygiene at the right time, in the right way. We have to always think, what have I just done with my hands? And what am I about to do with my hands? And we have to clean our hands before and after every activity. When we're doing any activity anywhere around the home that's a shared or group activity, we need to clean our hands before and again after the activity. When we're inside the resident's room, or whenever we're doing direct hands-on care with a resident, the risk of transmitting infection is the greatest. We have to stop that transfer of organisms. Cleaning our hands at the right time, in the right way, is the best way to do that. A nurse rubs her hands with hand sanitizer. There are four moments for hand hygiene. Inside the residence room, these four moments must be practiced by everyone, staff, family, and visitors. Moment number one is just before you first make contact with the resident or the residence room. Clean your hands when you first enter the residence room before you touch the resident or any object or furniture in the resident's immediate environment. That way you can protect the resident and the room from harmful organisms carried in on your hands from other areas of the building. Moment 2. 
Clean your hands immediately before any aseptic procedure to protect the resident against harmful organisms. Aseptic procedures in long-term care might include applying bandages, oral dental care, eye drops, catheter insertion, preparing medication, or changing a dressing. The resident's own skin also carries organisms, so we clean before aseptic procedures to keep them from entering the resident's body. Moment number three. Clean your hands immediately after any exposure risk to body fluids to protect yourself. Gloves are to be changed after each task so organisms are not transmitted on gloves. Always clean hands right after removing them. We can be exposed to body fluids when we handle waste or make contact with contaminated and visibly soiled materials. We have to clean our hands any time we have any possible contact with saliva, urine, feces, vomit or blood, or broken skin. When doing continence care or toileting, hands must be cleaned. This can happen to us whenever or wherever we are doing activities like touching broken skin, wound dressing, giving injections, drawing blood, doing oral care or continence care. Clean your hands for your own safety and to protect the environment of the home from spread of organisms. Moment number four. Leaving the resident environment after touching the resident or any objects or furniture in that environment is the final moment in the cycle. Cleaning your hands reduces the transmission of organisms and protects both you and the overall environment of the long-term care home. These are the four moments that everyone who enters the residence room needs to know and follow. In the home, we share group activities in the social, craft, and recreational areas, hallways, and treatment rooms. This includes the entry into the home. Everybody who's working or visiting in the home must remember to clean hands before beginning an activity and after ending the activity. If staff, volunteers, or families provide any direct care anywhere, they must follow the four moments for hand hygiene. Direct care is hands-on care such as bathing, washing, or turning a resident, changing clothes or providing continence care, changing dressings, caring for wounds, lesions, and toileting. A common activity in the home is helping people eat or drink. Any type of feeding, like giving liquids, snacks, or meals, requires us to clean our hands and the hands of the resident. Clean hands before beginning the feeding and after the feeding is finished. If during the feeding you're exposed to any saliva or mucus or other body fluids, then you need to clean your hands again to protect yourself and any residents you might touch. If you're going to touch the inside of the resident's mouth while feeding, you need to wear gloves. Clean hands before putting on gloves to protect the resident from organisms. After removing the gloves, clean hands again. There's a right way to do every job, and hand hygiene is a critical part of the work we do here. Cleaning hands at the right moment, the right way, will decrease the spread of infections to the resident and to you. We can help the residents we care for so they can live healthier, more risk-free lives in this, their home. Text, just clean your hands. Acknowledgements, Veterans Center, Sunnybrook Health Sciences Center, Toronto, Ontario. www.justcleanyourhands.ca